What's going on guys? My name's Cody and welcome to the very first episode of N Retrospect. For the inaugural episode, I couldn't think of a better game to start with than the very first game I played for the Nintendo 64. This is Diddy Kong Racing. Diddy Kong Racing was developed by Rareware and released in November of 1997. This kart racer was unique with its multiple vehicles, unlockable characters, boss battles, and a single player adventure mode, complete with an overworld and storyline. Timber the Tiger's parents have gone on vacation, leaving Timber to watch over their island. However, things go awry when the evil space wizard, Whizpig, swoops in and takes control of the island, locking away all the tracks in the process. It's up to Diddy and his friends to stop Whizpig and take back the island one race at a time. One of the big features that stood out, in my opinion, was the addition of different vehicles. Not only could you race in a car, but you also had access to a hovercraft as well as a plane. Certain levels required you to use one vehicle, while others had branching paths that could only be accessed by plane or hovercraft. Another cool feature was the power-up system. Unlike Mario Kart's item blocks, items were accessed by driving into different colored balloons scattered across the tracks. Collect more balloons of the same color and your item becomes stronger. For example, one red balloon gives you one rocket while three red balloons gives you a barrage of rockets capable of absolutely destroying your opponents. It wouldn't be a fair review if I didn't cover the game's flaws. Most notably, Diddy Kong Racing can get very repetitive. The game has five worlds with four levels in each. Once you finish first in each level, you then have to race the boss. After beating the boss, you have to go back to each level, collect eight silver coins, and still finish in first. When you're done with that, you have to go back to the boss, race him again, and then you'll receive the piece of Whizpig's amulet needed to continue. On top of that, in order to reach the secret world Future Funland and get the game's true ending, you have to win each world's trophy race, a back-to-back -back Grand Prix of all the levels in each world. In order to unlock the game's fastest character, TT, you have to beat TT's ghost in time trial mode for every single race. It's nice to have unlockable content, but the way to unlock them can get tiresome. Then again, there's not a whole lot you can do with a racing game besides racing. The game also features the debut of two beloved Rareware icons, Banjo the Bear from the Banjo-Kazooie series and Conker the Squirrel from Conker's Bad Fur Day. Conker was originally going to star in a much more kid-friendly platforming game, 12 Tales Conker 64, before emerging four years later in the M-rated adventure we all know today. Marvelous. A sequel was also planned for Diddy Kong Racing on the Nintendo GameCube called Donkey Kong Racing. Unlike its predecessor, this game would have used rideable creatures instead of carts and featured more members of the Donkey Kong family. Unfortunately, Rare was purchased by Microsoft in 2002 and the game was ultimately cancelled. Overall, Diddy Kong Racing is a fun kart racer with unique features and a charming presentation. As a kid, this was the very first N64 game I ever played, and quite possibly the first game I ever played in general. It's no surprise that I was absolutely obsessed with it. The colorful visuals, the whimsical soundtrack, and memorable characters will be engraved in my mind forever. The game can get repetitive, and sometimes the boss battles are a little cheap, but in retrospect, I had little reason not to love this game. Thanks for watching in retrospect, my name's Cody, and I'll see you next time.